All right, guys, so today's show is a little weird. Here's the deal. I got a tip late last week that stripers are starting to roll into the Delta. Trolling along the West Bank was pretty lucrative for, for schoolie sized fish. The tides were perfect last Friday for me to sneak out in the morning, fish one tide change for two hours, get all the content I could possibly get, catch a few fish, get off the water, and be back in my office in the afternoon. Awesome, totally down for it. So I packed up the Duckworth, headed down there, not terribly early, got on the water about 8.30, 9 o'clock in the morning, trolled for my two hours, <laughs> phenomenal day. Caught a ton of fish. I think we got 12, 14 fish in the boat. Nothing of huge size, but had great action for two hours straight. I rolled a ton of content, talked about a lot of different tactics, where, how, when, exactly what we were doing, showed our baits, our lines, all kinds of good stuff. Sit down this morning to put all that together for you, and I have a problem. Here's the deal. The wind was blowing. It wasn't crazy blowing, but it was blowing, and we were trolling right into it 90% of the time down the West Bank heading south. It completely washed out all of my audio from every camera I had running in the boat. Um, almost none of it was usable. So, that's not good. I spent this morning piecemealing what I could and hobbling this video together. I know the audio is not great, but there's still a lot of cool content here. There's still some fish being caught and we talk about exactly what we were doing and you could go down there tomorrow, fish the tides and do exactly the same thing. And, and that's my goal is to get you guys on the fish. So I know you're gonna let me know the audio is terrible. Just keep your finger on the volume button. It's gonna go up and down a little bit and I'm gonna sound like I'm in a tin can a whole bunch because that's what happens when you have to chop tons of wind noise out of audio over and over and over again. But I think it's still usable and I think there's still some value here. So here you go. Delta Stripers, last Friday, phenomenal day. Here's how we did it. So uh, this is what we call ingenuity on the water. Matt's got a fish in his hand, second of a double. Before he's even got that one in the water, we basically got a triple on. So uh, we have found the fish, that's for sure. It's a good problem to have when you have too many fish on deck and you can't reel in the one that's on the hook. <laughs> we haven't found anything of great size yet. We've caught and released quite a few small keepers, but um, man, this is fun. I can't tell you how much fun it is to be out here back on the Delta again trolling on a day like this. So Matt and I are out here uh, in Duckworth once again. Today we're out on the West Delta. Um, we're trolling the West Bank. We launched at Brandon Island, goes right under the bridge and straight across to the West Bank. This morning we knew the tides were in our favor. Uh, high tide at the Rio Vista Bridge was right about 10.30. And uh, for the first 30 minutes or so, we had a couple of scraggler fish. And then uh, as we started going south, we got into the current and uh, a little bit of wind chop, which has worked to our advantage today. We're trolling a really simple setup. Deep running, feline predators, um, nothing special. They're, they're right off the shelf feline predators. We're tipping them with the zoom trick worm. I didn't have any white ones, so I'm going to hit them on the pink kind of worm trolling this morning. Um, they seem to be working just fine. The fish don't seem to care that it's not a white worm. Day. Water temperature is about 73 degrees, and conditions honestly are, are just absolutely perfect. And we put a number of schoolie fish in the boat so far. I, I, we lost count a long time ago, but uh, we've caught quite a few. Um, really simple what we're doing. We know our gear is running. We got it. We just let out the gear until it hit bottom in about 15 feet of water, maybe 13 feet of water. Cranked it up a couple turns, and we've just stayed on that line, 13 to 15 feet all day. Every once in a while, our, our gear is ticking the bottom, and we'll come out a little bit and then drift back in. Um, following the weed lines, it's been pretty straightforward, pretty simple, and it, it's totally working for us. And we're on again. We cruised down towards uh, the main San Joaquin Sac convergence down here and found some current. And uh, I've had a couple good bites. This is the first one that's stuck out of the last couple we've had on. Nice. I got it. 
Number two or three maybe in the day. Sweet. Little schoolie size striper, quick release. So when you're trolling the West Bank on the west side of the Sacramento River, this is like the southwest corner of the Sac River where just before it meets the San Joaquin, we're just south of the power lines. Um, you can see behind me, there, there's weeds pretty close to the boat. And there's a big shelf where it goes from about 16 feet to maybe six or eight feet very abruptly. And we're just riding right on that edge. We're trying to stay as close to the edge as we can without getting up on it and dragging our gear through the weeds. But um, between the electronics, watching your grab, and, uh, and watching the map where you can see where the contours are, it's pretty easy to stay right in the zone. And the fish are maybe two to three feet off that big lip, right where it falls down, and that's where they've consistently been all day. So you gotta watch the shoreline because when you see the weeds break, or when you see like a point or a tree a little bit farther out or near the water's edge, you know there's gonna be a point and you gotta go out around it. Um, and that'll keep you from running up into the weeds and, and totally messing up your gear and getting it all fouled up. We've, we've had a pretty good success today staying out of the weeds. Every once in a while, you're, you're, bound, to, you're bound to pick up some trash and you got to bring your gear in. This is definitely a two-person operation. Um, one person maintaining the course of the boat and one person working the gear for sure. And uh, once we knew how far our setback was, which on these P-Line Predators at three miles an hour is right about 100 feet to be 13 feet deep, we can, if we get into a little bit deeper area, we can let out 10 or 15 feet of line. If we get a little shallower, we can crank it up a couple turns. But um, it, it's a chore. You got to stay on top of it. This isn't, a, this isn't just let your lines out and troll along and enjoy a hot dog. You got to work your gear constantly. You want to be about 18 inches off the bottom. And I don't know if you can see it on the screen here, but we've been marking fish right on the bottom all day. And uh, most of the fish we've caught, we've seen them on the screen and called it right before we hook up, um, which might happen any second now with the bait and the, the marks we're seeing down there now. But um, you just got to watch the shore and, and make sure that you're keeping your gear in the zone. If you drift out into 18 or 20 feet of water, you're probably not going to catch anything. Your gear is way up off the bottom. If you get in too shallow, you're just going to be fighting weeds all day. So it's a really fine line, um, maintaining course speed and the right depth. Depth is the key. Um, one thing I will say is when we do catch a fish, I often turn out towards the middle of the river to get away from the edges so we don't foul up the other gear we have. And it's really common every time we've drifted out in 20, 22 feet of water, we see a lot of suspended fish out there. But um, they're not biting. You want the ones that are up close to shore that are chasing bait and pushing it up. Those are the ones that are actively feeding. The fish that are out deep, you can catch them. They're out there. They're suspended fish. You might try a dig or something else. But for trolling with, with deep diving plugs, you, you got to keep your bait in the zone. So you got to find the fish that are in the, the, the depth that, you're, that your bait is running at. And you have a little bit of control over depth. But you're really not going to get be able to get any deeper than about 15 or 16 feet with the gear we have behind us. So um, that's been our goal, and that's where we stayed all day. Well, we're, we're in the zone right now. Fuck oh, yeah. There we go. There we go. Fish on. Fish on. Got him. Right, so we got out kind of into the deep stuff out there and went and went past where we were marking fish and kind of came to the end of the current uh, it's an incoming tide it's changing as we're as we, as we were trolling out so we went ahead and made a direction change and we're trolling right back up the opposite direction so when we do that two variables have changed the direction we're going's changed and the speed we were going's changed right now um, we're riding with the current so the boat's going a little bit faster than it was on the way out and what that's going to do is a couple things. Um, it's going to change the depth that our gear was running at the speed we were running before. So as soon as we made the turn and got back on our line, we had to retake all our measurements for the amount of line we had out for the depth that we wanted to be. Because what we had before doesn't apply because the speed's changed and also the current's dealing with that is not pulling down on our baits anymore. It's holding them up a little higher in the water column. So to get back to the depth we were and find the bottom in about 13 to 14 feet of water, we actually had to let out about 20 to 25 more feet of line on our reels. Um, but once we know where that is, 
we, we can maintain that depth all the way up this line just like we did all the way down. But you have to do that throughout the day. Don't think that because when you just hit something worked right at the beginning going downstream, it's going to work going upstream. Those changes, if the wind shifts or if the current changes or your boat speed changes, you have to readjust your gear. So it's not a bad idea to have a little cheat sheet and sometimes I'll use the notepad on my phone um, and just make notes on which direction we're going and how deep and how far you want it out. The other thing too is every lure is a little different. So you might have one lure that likes to be 100 feet out to run 13 feet deep and another one that might need to be 108, 110. There's always a little bit of variance. So you gotta measure it for each lure. And if you're not checking your gear to make sure where you're at and that you're not staying on the bottom, you're probably not in the strike zone as much as you think you are. So it's a constant game and a constant battle. But once you get it dialed and you know where your marks are, stick with them and, and they, they should be fairly constant as long as your boat speed is, maintains the same. All right, quick rundown of our gear today. If you watch the channel at all, you heard Cal talking lately about uh, his salmon halibut striper rod. That's what we're using today. It's a seven foot E-glass rod. It's been phenomenal for trolling for striper. Uh, nice soft tip. We can see the action of our lure. It's got a great backbone in it. Nice handling and it's the right weight. It's not a super heavy rod. It's not super light. It doesn't feel flimsy. Um, it has a ton of backbone for reeling these, these fish in. And we know exactly what our bait's doing by looking at the tip of the rod. For a reel, I have a Daiwa LCB 17 line counter. The line counter is critical. You need to have a line counter when you're out here trolling for striper. You've got to know how far your setback is to know what the depth your lures are running at. I spooled it with really inexpensive uh, Berkeley Big Game 20 pound test. I run it right to a snap swivel that I clip right on the uh, right on the lure. It allows us to change from shallow to deep or change the lures out quickly if we need to. Um, it doesn't seem to foul up too much. We've been pretty good about keeping it out of the weeds today. So, so a big snap swivel is not going to tear you up too much. And oh, I just got hit, guys! I'm holding the rod and just got hit. Try and talk about it. How cool is that? Um, man, I wish I would have caught that one. But uh, these rods are available in our store. We got them bundled with the same gear we're using today. Check it out. Um, it's a pretty killer setup. They're, they're not very expensive. They're really durable. And, and I gotta tell you, it's the first time I've had one, the first time I've used one today. Phenomenal rod for the type of, the type of fishing we're doing. And uh, this will be great here soon when it cools off and we start trolling for salmon as well. I uh, can't wait to hook a big king on it in the river.